to catch up. So as of this moment, uh, we're, we're starting to record this session. So again, I'm Ken Harvey, signed in right now under my middle name, Gene Harvey. And uh, with that, uh, Frederick, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure, uh, my name is Frederick Emmerich. Um, I'm also an assistant, I'm an assistant professor at Kimap, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna turn the sound down here. Sorry, this, I hear my own voice on a delay and it's distracting. So um, I'm an assistant professor at Kimap University and um, I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts uh, in the US. My professional background, uh, I've worked as a public relations specialist in media relations uh, in Washington, DC. Uh, I've also worked for um, an alternative newspaper in Almaty, Kazakhstan. I have um, a fair amount of experience um, doing uh, various sorts of research uh, jobs. My academic background, um, I have an undergraduate degree and a master's degree in media arts from the University of Arizona. Uh, media arts is a field um, uh, in communication deals with um, uh, producing um, producing and analyzing um, media artifacts, particularly uh, film, video, television, um, and those sorts of things. Um, and I'm also, uh, I've completed all my coursework for a PhD in communication um, and the reason that I'm in Toronto right now is that I'm doing um, research related to that. So um, my uh, Qing specialties are um, uh, online journalism, uh, online communication, uh, 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 political communication, and public relations. And I'm looking forward to this course. This is the first time I've been participating in a full course uh, using online distance learning. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes and how that experience is being face-to-face -face in a classroom. And I look forward to learning more about all of you. Thank you. Okay, I see over in the text chat that uh, they're getting an echo back there. Um, it may be that when somebody else is speaking, we may have to mute our own microphones. Like, uh, maybe when you were speaking, I should have muted my microphone, and maybe now that I'm speaking, you should mute yours, Frederick. I'm not sure where we're getting the echo at. Um, give me a second. What I'm thinking I'm going to try to do is... Uh, bring each of our uh, people from from uh, Toronto or from Korea in this uh, uh, up here to share this uh, podium with us so to speak uh, so Kim I'm going to uh, try to bring you in and uh, you would have to accept that. He'll ask if you will accept it. And you could introduce yourself. And then each student uh, individually, I'll, I'll just bring people in one at a time to introduce themselves. And in each case, uh, you would then have to turn on your uh, talk now button um, and also accept the invitation. You don't have to accept the invitation but uh, you'll be asked on your computer whether or not you will accept. And if you say yes and then press your talk now button down the lower left, you, your image and your, your, your webcam should come on and your, your uh, microphone should turn on. Ken, if they're getting a bad echo, maybe 
uh, typing the instructions in the chat would help. Yes. Okay. Good. I'm from Korea and I'm junior. Uh, I 
I want to run this class. <laughs> oh, English and journal and media. So I speak. I want to speak eloquent, blunt, blunt, and so. I challenge this class. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay, uh, can you hear me again now? Okay, I, I changed my headset. Uh, thank you, everybody, for introducing yourselves. Um, okay, um, I, I've changed my headset. I think maybe that might reduce some of the uh, static and echo. Um, so um, it is, it, uh, from my experience in the past, it is better to use the headsets uh, when we can but uh, it's not always possible. Um, Frederick, be, uh, I, I want to go to the uh, to the PowerPoint at some point. Uh, do you have anything else to say before I go to that? Okay. Uh, then I'm going to... No, no, that's, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll come back to you when I'm done going through the, uh, the uh, syllabus and so forth. Oops. I'm actually running the PowerPoint off my other computer, so it'll come up in just a second. Uh, I had it up earlier, and it uh, went off on me for some reason. But should, if I don't confuse myself by doing the PowerPoint on one computer and speak on speaking on the other computer I should be fine uh, by the way uh, just so that everybody can get used to this idea uh, students in this class will be doing presentations uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, use PowerPoints as I am here and uh, of course your webcam as you just already experienced so it, uh, it it's it's not a real difficult system to use and will talk you through it the, the first time through. But we'll talk about that as we proceed. Uh, again, my name is Ken Harvey, and that's my email address. Um, I will send a copy of this uh, PowerPoint uh, to, to Kim. And, uh, and so you'll have, and it's also, I guess it's already in the syllabus. Uh, I presume she already distributed the syllabus to you. Uh, a little bit of my background uh, and just kind of a, by way of intro introduction, I guess uh, I consider myself more of a professional than a professor. Um, and so to me, being called Dr. Harvey or Dr. Ken, um, it's acceptable, but I don't, uh, I kind of resist it. Uh, working in a newsroom most of my life, uh, if I asked a you know colleagues in a at a newspaper to uh, call me Dr. Harvey, they'd probably throw me out a window. Um, in fact, I've actually done research on on this subject, and I I asked uh, over about 765 um, media and PR executives that if they had to, if, if everything else was equal and they had to choose in hiring a person with a master's degree or a person with a, ma a doctorate, a PhD, 
which would they hire? And by far, most of them would hire the person with the master's degree. Uh, they would not, they didn't want somebody with a PhD on their staff. And so consequently, um, if I go back into the profession, I will take my PhD off my resume, off my CV. Um, by the way, if, if there's any trouble hearing me right now, uh, you know, let me know in the chat box if, if anybody's having any trouble. Um, so I just assume be, be called Ken and uh, uh, this uh, address or this, uh, by the way, is my Facebook address down at the bottom. And Phil, be, you're, you're welcome to befriend me on Facebook. Um, I like to uh, have all my students befriend me because that allows me to keep track of them uh, after the course is over. Uh, particularly our students that are with us several years. Uh, I, I like to see what happens in their career. The, uh, uh, we've already introduced you to my uh, co-instructor, uh, Frederick. Uh, among other things, he's uh, been a leader here at KEMEP. Uh, he was our chairman here for several years. And uh, okay, I need to be louder. Is that what you're saying, Min Sook? Um, I'm not loud enough. Let me uh, Okay, is that better? I don't want to get too loud. Uh, you guys were blurring a little bit. Okay. Okay, good. Anyway, Frederick was our chairman of our department for several years and is uh, an important leader in our uh, at, here at KEMEP, uh, uh, particularly in our department. Uh, so we really appreciate uh, all that he does. Um, actually, going back to Frederick in just a second, he he he. Uh, kind of specializes in teaching online journalism and online um, uh, media and so forth. Uh, so um, it, is, it was natural for me to ask him to team teach this with me this, uh, this, this year um, because he's very used to online uh, technology. A little more of my, my own background. Uh, I was about 25 years in journalism. I, I have been in higher education for about 18 years, but a lot of that was overlapping with my professional career. So, uh, for example, I worked at a daily newspaper in America, um, one owned by the largest chain in America now, um, McClatchy. And uh, at the same time, I was running the journalism program for a local university. So, um, I, I'm really not 100 years old, as I say here. The, 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 when you add things up, it sounds like I must be. Uh, almost. I'm almost 100 years old, but not quite. Uh, the uh, I was also working in, uh, I had a contract uh, as part of my uh, public relations work. I had a contract with the state of Washington with their migrant bilingual uh, program and I uh, handled communications for them and produced a bilingual uh, newspaper for the, for the state migrant bilingual program. I was also a, a corporate marketing and PR director for another seven years or so and altogether about 15 years uh, in uh, in PR marketing. Um, also, I've been working with NGOs, nonprofits for about 20 years. Again, overlapping, uh, I started my own nonprofit organization um, about, um, well, it's been, let me see, seven plus, uh, I guess it's about 14 years now uh, working with my own nonprofit. And then I had been involved with others before that. Um, in conjunction with my uh, work as a government official, I was elected as a city councilman. And as part of that, I, I also was assigned to work with different nonprofits and different organizations. And so I was on the board of directors of a, um, of a, uh, anyway, of a charity uh, during that period of time too. So uh, altogether, I really have more than 20 years of experience with, with nonprofit organizations. I did uh, had a radio uh, commentary sh uh, show for a while, so I have that one year in broadcasting. Um, you know, academic research, of course, and, and book publishing. I've been involved in book publishing. And uh, started working on web creation, actually more clo closer to 20 years ago now. Uh, I was 15 when I made this PowerPoint, I guess, but I've been doing web pages, websites uh, for about 20 years since uh, 
Well, when I was making them originally, I was creating web pages on Notepad uh, before they had any uh, front page or any of the other softwares to help you create web pages. So I have a very broad background. Um, and that's, again, partly why I consider myself more a professional than a professor. Um, but hopefully I can uh, uh, help share uh, some of that experience and some of those insights with you during this course. Uh, you see some of the um, different websites that I've created. Um, and in fact, maybe well, I could actually oops, bring this up if I wanted to. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe another time. Um, like I said, we'll distribute these to you and you can uh, take a look at these websites. Uh, this this uh, particular web conferencing system does allow me to go to other websites if I chose to. Uh, and, and maybe I will when I'm done with the PowerPoint. But I want to get through the, uh, the syllabus, make sure you understand how we're going to run the, the course. Here's just a screen capture of, of my uh, virtualuniversity.us site. I'm just going to quickly go through some of the screen captures uh, of uh, uh, some of my websites. Uh, this is my IEI-TV.net website, kind of an online TV channel. Um, we also have one here for KeyMap, just KeyMap.TV. I may refer you to that sometime to uh, watch some video. Uh, I've worked with NGOs here. Uh, still uh, with a project called Insights into Development. Uh, I've been doing that now for uh, almost seven years and we've got uh, another conference coming up soon. Uh, this is a project to help NGOs, help non-government organizations uh, throughout Central, uh, Central Asia. Uh, we have a three and a half million dollar grant from USAID now to do this and so our conference will include delegates uh, from everywhere from, uh, well, from all the stands, Kazakhstan to Pakistan and everywhere in between. And so I'm continuing to work with my, with the, not, with the NGOs as we call them. Uh, this is my, well, my, my uh, kind of CV, so to speak. There's some links to some of my previous work uh, at this website. Uh, at uh, virtual-institute.us uh, uh, backslash cap, uh, can with a capital K. Uh, and uh, at that web, same website, uh, some of like, uh, like I said, some of the work I've done in the past, some of the stories I've written for other newspapers, including the bilingual newspaper you see uh, down towards the bottom. Also, some of my work samples I mentioned, I worked in PR marketing. And uh, as that part of that, I had to actually, I was kind of a book publisher even in that role. Uh, a lot of what we had to submit to bid on various government projects were books as long as 200 pages, uh, explaining, you know, giving all of our background and so forth. And as I mentioned, I, you know, do. Uh, academic research as well. This is one of my uh, recent uh, articles ha that that uh, had published. Um, anyways, uh, I, I did it with a political scientist, so actually he, he kind of spun this particular article uh, uh, more towards uh, uh, political science. We found that newspaper publishers were, were very willing to hire political science students, almost as willing to hire them as journalism students. Um, in order to have their background knowledge in covering government and politics. Uh, in my, uh, I just wanted to share a little bit of my philosophy of education. I, I think um, that my priorities in education kind of run like this. First off, attitude. Uh, to me, it's very important. Uh, in fact, the, the most important thing I'd say is attitude. Uh, there was, I, I went to a conference recently where a university from uh, England 
mentioned they had just done a study. They had surveyed a number of ex business executives and, and and asked them what were the most important things that they were looking for in, in hiring somebody. And uh, most of those uh, items that they selected were among these top two items in this list, attitude and communication skills. Um, not, nothing, there was nothing in the top ten uh, things that they're looking for that really had to do with a person's major, what they knew from their, from their stu uh, major studies. Um, attitude to me is more than just a positive attitude. It's also a work ethic, how hard you're going to work. Um, Certainly, be having in fact, there have been studies that show that a positive attitude correlates more with success than does your GPA, your grade point average. So certainly, a positive attitude is is important. So is a work ethic. So is uh, um, you know a person who throughout their life continues to be curious, continues to learn, continues to work hard, will ultimately be uh, much will be much more successful than somebody who's just smart. Uh, in fact, Harvard, even Harvard did a study. Uh, they, they studied all of their fellowship winners to see uh, who was succeeding later on in life. And they found that the ones that were most successful after graduation were not the people with the highest grade point averages, but they were the people who were uh, maybe having to work part time while they're going through the university, people that were involved with clubs and other social activities. They were not the ones with the perfect GPAs. And so even at Harvard, they, they found that, uh, um, you know, success does not correlate with, with the grade point average. Um, certainly uh, in our field, in communications, communication skills are essential. But their communication skills, according to these business executives, are some of the most important skills they're looking for, no matter what uh, position they're hiring people for. Uh, I mentioned I worked in PR marketing for uh, a couple of different uh, uh, technical firms, engineering, uh, architectural firms. And both of my CEOs uh, for, uh, at those different firms uh, on their own without being um, prompted to do so uh, told me, Ken, I wish that I had studied more communications at the university. Um, and they said, uh, you know, my engineering skills are really important, obviously, but the key to success in engineering is communications. Uh, they were both, uh, both of these CEOs that I worked under uh, in my PR marketing uh, uh, for, for technical firms um, were naturally good communicators, which is why they were actually CEOs. But they both realized even though they had become CEOs, they could have accomplished even more. They could have been CEOs of bigger organization, bigger technical firms, if they had better communication skills than they, than they did. And so even for an engineer, you think that's about as far away from communications as, as it could be. Even for an engineer, success in their career relates more to communications than it does engineering. Uh, so it's important that you, that you understand that communications more than just uh, learning how to, to write a news story or something like that. Uh, but no matter what your, your major is, um, knowing how to communicate with people one-on-one -on -one, as well as uh, how to, as how to, to write uh, accurately and, and persuasively, uh, all these different communication skills, working in as, as a team, with teamwork, all these different communication skills are really important to succeed in your, in your careers. Um, that's according to me, but it's also according to this survey of uh, several hundred business executives in London. Um, other skills, uh, technical skills, are very important. Um, certainly applicable understanding and insight within your own area. Then a lot of what we take is kind of the random facts or whatever are the least important. And yet, at the university, you may be required to memorize a bunch of stuff that you can't really see how it's going to be important. And you're probably right. <laughs> it probably isn't going to be. And it is probably at the bottom of this list in my book as to educational priorities. Although, it's hard to really appreciate what understanding of the arts, for example, or understanding of some things that you don't see, think that you will, um, that will be of value to you in your life. It's really uh, difficult to, under, under, to estimate what value they will be. But nonetheless, uh, this is my uh, list of priorities in education. And I guess, not necessarily, I guess when I say that, um, 
um, it's the emphasis on how to get a job, I guess, in that, in that sense. I think my job as a professor, or my job as a professor is to get you a job. That's my first job. I also want to give you the background to help you have a good life. And a part of that is helping you to have the right attitudes because uh, that's uh, also your happiness in life relates a lot to attitude. Uh, people that appreciate things in life are usually happier than those that don't, for example. Uh, here's a question for you. Do you love what you're good at or are you good at what you love? What do you think? Um, maybe you could type that into the chat box. Can you, can you respond to that? Do you, do you love what you're good at or are you good at what you love? Maybe the first part is A and the second one is B. A is uh, that you love what you're good at and B is you're good at what you love. Which is true for you, A or B? Can you put that in the chat? A, you love what you're good at. B, you are good at what you love. Okay, did uh, we get everybody there? Okay. Anyway, um, I don't think there's there's not really a I, I don't think there's a, a right answer to this exactly. Um, it may be for some people it is uh, a um, that that just what you're naturally good at is what you love. But I think in the long term, I think the long term is more B. And that's my own personal opinion. Uh, that uh, what you love you generally become better at uh, because you love it you continue to study it you continue to think about it you continue to explore it and so eventually what you love is what you become best at uh, when I was in uh, high school I was best at math and science uh, in fact in math uh, we have a nationalized test in America that I took and I ranked at 99 and two-third percentile, which meant I, there were only one-third of one percent of the people that took that test that were better at math than I was. But I didn't see, I enjoyed math, but I didn't see that math was part of my future. And so after geometry in high school, I quit taking math. Uh, later I took statistics and I was really good at statistics. So I, I'm naturally good at math, but it's not what I felt my life was all about um, and, and communications uh, composition for example was probably my weakest subject in high school but I felt it was kind of part of my mission so to speak to communicate so I know for me personally it's B that I uh, you know I've gotten a lot better at what I love um, and love by my definition in this case isn't that I love to do it better than math I, I enjoy doing math and I enjoy writing and communicating, but it's more, again, kind of my life mission, I feel like relates to communication uh, more than math. So for me, it's B. And I think in the long run for all of us, the important part to remember is that for all of us, we will become better in life at anything that we love because uh, we will spend more time with it, thinking about it, learning about it. We will just naturally be attracted to that. And so we'll become better at it over a period of time. I mentioned uh, that's part of the attitude is everything, a positive attitude, passion, a sense of mission, strong work ethic, um, but it doesn't always necessarily feel like it's work if you love it. Uh, so that comes back to that question I was just saying, I asked, uh, the idea of lifelong learning, uh, you, you have a, if you have a passion for something, then you're going to keep learning about it. So attitude is more than just a positive attitude. And, and uh, if you have, uh, you know, these various different types of attitude related to this, your passion, your strong work ethic, so forth, uh, I think you will ultimately succeed whatever you decide to do, as long as with, within reason. I, I'm not one that thinks says that you can succeed at anything you, you, you want to. 
I know I can't succeed as a professional football player, no matter how much I want to. It's not going to happen, especially now that I'm 65. So there are limits to, to for all of us. Okay, let's go ahead and go through the syllabus a little bit. And I did send this uh, to Kim uh, already, so hopefully you have a copy of this. Um, we have our contact, our names and contact information at the top. Um, you have the website where you come and meet with us. That's obviously you're here, so at least some of you know how to get here. Uh, do just as you did today. Type in your regular name as you come in so we know who's here. We can kind of keep roll. A couple of things in this part of the syllabus. Uh, first off, uh, uh, down towards the bottom there, uh, the syllabus gives you a different URL to come into if you're going to be making a presentation. Um, I can give you that power outright, but if you come into this website, then you will come in as a moderator. And uh, it doesn't hurt anything for more to have more than one moderator. As you see, I'm signed in as moderator twice, and Frederick is signed on as a moderator. So there's really there's three moderators signed on, as far as the system knows right now. And so if you're scheduled to do a presentation, if you sign into this uh, second website, this rather long one, uh, you will see uh, you'll have different power than you do when you come in as a regular student. So. Uh, if you remember to do that, that would be good. If you don't, uh, of course, however, when you come into that, you will come in under a different name. I'm not sure. I forget which name that, that brings you in under. Um, I'll have to test it and, and find out who you, who you will be when you come in with that, uh, with that uh, URL. I mentioned some backup plans. Uh, we never had to use a backup plan last year, and I hope we don't have to this year. But I'm just saying, if, if, if neither Frederick nor I, for some reason, can get on online with you, uh, then there is a website where I've posted some videos. And I'm just asking you to go ahead as a class to watch uh, three of those videos uh, and, and talk about them uh, in lieu of uh, our, our presentations. Uh, hopefully, that won't be needed. But just in case it is, in case we, for whatever reason, cannot show up, um, then you, you have something to do in place of our, our regular lectures and so forth. And in which case, we will get caught up the following week. Uh, if you, uh, you can also go to those sites by going to keymap.tv. It's very simple to remember, keymap period TV, and going to the today's news and analysis and that in turn would take you to that uh, first uh, site that you saw the citizen news and comments news dash comments you would see something that looked like this uh, links to today's news down each side uh, at the top is a link to uh, uh, newspapers from around the world you might want to come to this website regardless and, and read the news and and look at some of the newspapers from around the world uh, if you follow that arrow down, that's, that's not really part of the website, but that red arrow uh, is just uh, on the on the uh, PowerPoint. Uh, if you scroll down further on that website, you will see some of the videos that I was mentioning. So what I'm suggesting, if we don't make it one day, that you watch three of the videos on uh, the, at the bottom of that that original website. And then if for some reason we don't make it a second day, which I can't imagine, like I said, we never had a problem last year. At the bottom of those videos is another link, and that link takes you to another set of videos. And I think this other set has like maybe, oops, anyway, that, that goes to a second set of videos, and you can choose from those the second day that we miss, if we miss two days, which I doubt. Like I said, I've never had that, that much problem. Um, you see uh, in the syllabus uh, our, uh, some information about our textbook that we're using. Uh, Understanding Media and Culture and Introduction to Mass Communication uh, by Dr. Lul. Um, it gives you a website where you can download your own uh, 
a digital copy of this textbook. You see he's the director of, uh, Dr. Lul is the director of Globalization and Social Change Initiative at Lehigh University. It gives a little more background to Dr. Lul. Um, I already mentioned his title. He is also author of uh, uh, the award-winning Daily News Eternal Stories, the myth mythological role of journalism um, book. And he's uh, written more than 50 scholarly articles and book chapters. He's been a commentator on public na uh, national public radio and BBC and other media outlets. And he's a former writer for the Philadelphia Inquirer. So he has a, also has a very broad background, a very strong background uh, from which to write this textbook. These are this, th this is the table of contents uh, in, our, um, in our book, in that book by Dr. Uh, Lul. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to want you to present uh, two chapters from this book. And in fact, uh, if there's some of these subjects that interest you, you can actually lay claim to them right now. Um, it would be nice to get uh, some a volunteer uh, to, to uh, uh, present chapter one and another volunteer to present chapter two. For example, I'm going to come back to this slide in a second. So you can think about this. Uh, but you're going to, by the end of the semester, you'll make two presentations. And I want to talk about what those presentations will be like, and then we'll come back. And if you want to uh, volunteer to do one of these chapters, uh, you can, uh, or you make two choices if you want to. Uh, as soon as you make your choice, I'll put them on our list, and you'll, you'll own that chapter, so to speak. Let me, let me talk about uh, your presentations a second, and then we'll come back here and, uh, and see if any of you would like to uh, volunteer at this time to to do uh, one or two of those chapters at this time. Um, first off, uh, your overall your uh, assignments or how you're going to get a grade for this course. Uh, first off, your uh, every uh, week I'm going to uh, write a question, a discussion question on a Facebook site. And this is the uh, this gives you the uh, URL for that uh, Facebook site. It is uh, kind of a, a page, uh, a subsidiary page to my own Facebook site, but this one's set up specifically for this course. And so uh, probably yet today I will go on that site and write a question. And I expect you all to go there and give your answer. And so every week you should plan to go to that Facebook site and respond to whatever question I might might pose to you at that at that place. If you make a reasonable uh, response each week, then you'll get all 10%. Uh, if you get lazy some week, then you'll lose some points there. So uh, I please uh, go there every week and respond to the question. If I don't have a question at the start of the week, uh, check again um, like on Monday before the Monday before our class, and by then I would certainly have a question up. Uh, so I'll try to get it up on the same day, on the on the day of our of our class. I'll set up, put up a question uh, for that following week, so you have a uh, entire week to respond to the question. But if I don't, like I said, check uh, a little bit later in the week. Uh, in addition, you'll each do two presentations. Um, so each of you will do one of the ch uh, well two different chapters in the textbook. You'll give your presentation on it. Uh, your version of it, and you will, um, to get maximum points, you should also try to add a little bit from the Korean or Asian perspective. Uh, so I want you to go beyond what's in the textbook, give uh, a little bit more information uh, that you can gather about uh, Korean media and Asian media in, in general, if you wish. And each of your presentations will be worth 10% of the grade, so the, this is important. And again, in a second, I'll, I'll go through the criteria for how I, uh, we will grade those presentations. Um, we will also have three creative assignments during the semester. It might be a writing assignment to help you practice your writing. Uh, or it might be, uh, I'm thinking about having you do maybe uh, in teams, 
presuming we have some more people to create teams, uh, maybe make a video on related to one of these subjects, and I'll, I'll explain how to do that. That'll be later in the semester, and I, I would give you instruction on how to do that before we got there. But anyway, you'd have three creative assignments during the semester. Uh, to again, 10% each, so that'd make 30%, and then we'll have the final exam uh, worth 40% you will prepare the final exam, in essence. Um, you will have all the questions. You'll have probably uh, at least 100 questions to, to study before the final exam, from which we might give you 30 questions or 40 questions at the most. Um, they would all be uh, multiple choice. And like I say, you'll have these questions in advance. Um, Frederick and I will create questions from our presentations and we'll provide those questions to you, but also each of you, as you prepare prepare your presentations, part of your assignment is to, is to make three questions about your presentation and review those questions and their answers with us at the uh, at the end of the uh, of your presentation. Um, and those will be uh, among the pool of questions that we make may uh, draw on for the final exam. So you'll have all of the final exam questions, so if you study them hard, that you should get a very good grade in the final exam. Going through the syllabus, uh, we're actually already behind a little bit. Uh, Frederick and I got um, our wires crossed a little bit. So we're not going to present, uh, he's not going to present uh, chapter one th uh, this week, he will next week. And it would be nice if somebody would, would volunteer, a student would volunteer to do the student version of the presentation, maybe during the first hour next week. And then Frederick could uh, kind of add from there um, following the student presentation if somebody's willing to do that. Uh, again, you don't have to. We can start you the following week. It's actually the syllabus says the first student presentation won't take place till week three. Uh, but if somebody would like to do it in week two, then we could uh, kind of do it at the same time as the, on the same day we can have the student do their presentation, then the teacher can, uh, in this case, Sir Frederick can uh, build on your presentation and add uh, his perspective to it. Anyway, take a look at the syllabus. You can see kind of how we're going in that respect then. On the, le on the, in the middle column, you see what the professors are going to do, what Specifically, in most uh, well, in what's listed here, uh, Frederick will be uh, doing his presentations. Again, Chapter One will have to move forward, so at some point we'll have to uh, do two two chapters at once. But next week will be Chapter One instead of Chapter Two, uh, and you see when at the at the latest we'll start the student presentations. Uh, week four. Uh, again, after that, uh, every week we'll have probably two student presentations. It depends how many students we end up with. Uh, uh, I had been told before to expect about 12 students, and it doesn't look like we're going to have 12. Um, uh, I think Kim said there's seven signed up now. So in that case, we will change this syllabus and, and have uh, maybe only one student presentation in a lot of weeks. At least once we get caught up, uh, then we will have the student present the same chapter that the professor will be talking about. And so uh, we, we, we may double up and have two a week until we get caught up. If we, if we don't start off together, we'll have to get caught up and then we'll uh, may back off uh, with this few students to just one student presentation a week. So the syllabus will face some changes and I'll, I'll send you an updated version once we are sure how many students we have and, and so forth. Oh, I did, uh, I kind of skipped over. Let me go back again. You see week six, your first creative assignment will be due, and I, I uh, will, will advise you on that probably next week, what your first creative assignment will be. Um, it says covering chapters one through five. It may relate directly to those chapters, or it may not. Uh, we'll, we'll describe that to you, explain that to you uh, next week when we give you that first creative assignment, but it won't be due until uh, week six. 
you see later on uh, another creative assignment will be uh, due in week 10 and you see the current sequence of chapters again this is going to be adjusted so this is not the final uh, version of the syllabus and then your last creative assignment uh, you can hand it in before then if you wish, but it is uh, due the same day as your final exam. So uh, just be prepared and have that done. Uh, you might want to even hand it in a week before so that you don't have to think about it as you're preparing for the final exam. Let me uh, discuss then quickly the critique sheet, how you'll be graded on your presentations. Um, about 25% of your grade will be your, your visual aids that you use, your PowerPoint. Um, and part of that is it mentions uh, down here that uh, you'll be expected to do three uh, multiple choice questions that we may use in the final exam. Uh, so that's part of this visual aid grade, uh, good PowerPoint uh, slides plus uh, questions at the end. Uh, another 25% approximately is uh, kind of the contents. Uh, uh, have you created good contents uh, that, that will uh, enlighten your, your colleagues and us, uh, your peers? But also suggest here that you might, in order to do so, you might eliminate some of the content of that chapter. You don't have to present everything in a chapter. Uh, it's more important for your grade to do a really good job with your presentation than it is to cover everything in the chapter. So it is actually um, important that you figure out what to eliminate from the chapter, what not to cover in the chapter, um, and to emphasize what you think are the important parts. You only have, uh, say, 15 minutes. Uh, we haven't set an exact time limit on it, but uh, certainly um, if you go over 30 minutes, uh, we'll probably deduct, but 15 minutes is fine. 15, 20 minutes is fine. Um, and 30 minutes is a little bit long, but you wouldn't get docked for going 30 minutes. But if you went any longer than 30 minutes, you would be, uh, you would be penalized. But uh, we're expecting 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, so in 15 to 20 minutes, you probably can't cover a complete chapter very well. And so as I said here, it's important for you to understand what you, for you to choose what you think is most important for your peers in the class and focus on those items. Um, have good graphic illustrations uh, as well as uh, give examples. So perhaps you can think of some examples uh, within Korea to help uh, explain a concept that the book talks about, for example. Um, and, and perhaps examine con contrasting uh, kind of the opposite concepts sometimes help us to under helps us to understand a concept if that's appropriate. Um, then uh, the next part, once it comes up, oops, running two computers is confusing me, sorry. Um, then your actual delivery. Uh, did you deliver in such a way that you're exciting the people, your listeners? Are, are you, um, do you have something really interesting to say as you start, start the presentation? Uh, the last thing you want to do is say, well, I was kind of bored by this chapter, but this is what I got out of it. That's not going to excite the people listening to you. So try to think of something that, that is of interest to them, per perhaps a question, uh, something that they can, you can get them uh, discussing a question related to the chapter right off the bat to get them into the chapter um, or telling a story or, or something that will get their interest. Uh, of course, enunciate. Try to use your very best English as you present. Uh, we're not expecting perfect English, uh, so you're not going to be downgraded uh, uh, very much for for not being able to uh, you know have a you know be fluent in English. Just do your very best. Uh, but uh, uh, enunciate clearly and, 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 like I said, just do your best, uh, use your best English. Um, are you explaining the concepts clearly? Um, are you trying to, even though we're not in the same room, are you maintaining eye contact in the sense of, of with, with your webcam? You'll be speaking to the webcam. 
or are you reading? If, are, if you're reading everything, then you're not keeping uh, eye contact with, with anybody. So try, try to do as much as you can without reading it, but look right at the camera and explain it. Maybe look down at some notes once in a while. Um, and then uh, do you elicit feedback from uh, your listeners, from, from us and from your fellow students? Um, and when you do get some feedback from them, are you then elaborating? Are you explaining what they might not understand? And uh, do you energize the, the audience? Uh, are you enthusiastic? Are you positive? Are you, um, you know, I just try to be enthusiastic and that makes, uh, if you're excited about what you're talking about, that's another reason for you to be selective in what you present. Uh, select those portions of the chapter that you are excited about. If you're excited about what you present, then your listeners will be excited. If you're bored by what you present, your listeners will almost certainly be bored. So um, going back to the previous item, select what, you, what really is of interest to you out of the chapter. Present that very, very well with good examples, good illustrations, uh, and with good energy so that uh, we can give you good points on, on uh, uh, how you're energizing the class and then end with something memorable. Um, too often uh, students and too often all of us end our presentations with, uh, well, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> well, that's not a very memorable conclusion. Uh, if we can create a memorable conclusion with, again, with a story, with, uh, I don't know, something that will, just will help us remember uh, that your presentation, uh, that's the last thing we're going to hear. So uh, that, that's uh, important. And then finally, the last 25% are just, uh, are, did you take about the right amount of time, 15 to 20 minutes, not more than 30 minutes? Um, were you well prepared? Um, did you include it in this one uh, more precisely, although it kind of overlaps into the other areas? Or did, you, did, the, did the presentation use sources beyond those required? In other words, did, it, did you go beyond the... Uh, uh, the textbook and maybe find some some information about Korea that's not in the textbook um, and other innovative techniques so these are the things that you'll be graded on in your presentation um, and uh, maybe I should stop right there first off are there any questions you can just text them if you have any questions on anything that I've covered so far uh, and actually every day the, the text chat is set up. It's one, one of the easiest ways of letting us know when, when you want us to cover something better, when you don't understand something. Go ahead and, and use the text chat to, to ask your question. Uh, and right now, I'm definitely inviting you. If there's anything you, you don't understand or you have any questions about the syllabus uh, or, your, or your particular assignments, uh, please uh, type in your questions. I think that may have been the last slide. It doesn't actually tell me that. Let me call up my... Okay, yes, that is my last slide. Uh, I'm going to go back now. Uh, if you don't have any questions, or even if you do, you, if you have questions, please type them in. But I'm going to go back to the table of contents and give you a chance to volunteer now on one or two of those subjects. Okay. So here are the ta th here's the table of contents. Uh, presuming we don't have more than eight students, uh, we will just have you do um, yes uh, with your question on the 20 minutes um, I'm not going to be real picky it should be more than 15 and less than 30 so yes uh, around 20 would be perfect that'd be fine more than 15 less than 30 
at, at, as far as how long your presentation should be. So uh, it's kind of hard to, uh, to, to know, you know, when you, when you create your presentation, sometimes it's difficult to know just how long it's going to take you. Um, and especially if, if students start asking questions or if we start asking questions, it could take you a little bit longer just to answer questions. So um, if you plan on 20 minutes, then you should be perfect. That should be fine. Okay. So would you uh, like to select a subject now? So as I said, if you would like to choose now, I would appreciate it if somebody would like to um, be daring. And uh, yeah, I guess you get some bonus points for being daring uh, to choose uh, chapter one. And especially if you think you can be ready for next week, then uh, we could uh, have the student presentation the same day as, the, uh, as Frederick presents. And that's my preference to have you presenting the same day so he can listen to your presentation during the first hour of class, and then he can kind of build on top of that during the second hour of class. So if any of you'd like to now select, please do so. If not, uh, you don't have to select today, but on the other hand, uh, it's first come, first serve. Okay, Jonga, eight and 12, you're trying to sit, postpone this as long as you can, that's okay. Or maybe those are just subjects you like. Yes, that's fine. Uh, week three would be fine. Uh, unless somebody specifically says you think you can be ready in week two, uh, chapter one would be set for week three. So that's when it's scheduled in the, in the syllabus is uh, week three, I believe. So uh, uh, week three would be fine. If somebody wants to do chapter one for week three or chapter two with week three, that would be fine. Uh, no problem. Again, those that choose those first two subjects, I'll be particularly kind in my grading um, because I appreciate your being um, willing to be first. Uh, so you get bonus points if you choose uh, either chapter one or two. Otherwise, uh, what other subjects would some of you like to, to select? Six and 11, Yong. Okay. And Min Sok, do you have some preference yet of what you would like to choose? I'll go ahead and type these into the PowerPoint and pass it around. Ah, good boy. Um, absolutely great. Thanks. So chapter 1 and chapter 16, so you're kind of getting both ends of it, but you get bonus points for doing chapter one. Thank you very much, Min Sok. Um, so uh, that will be in week three. So um, you'll actually be a week, in this case, you'll be a week after Frederick teaches uh, his chapter one. Uh, but uh, you can still pick out the areas that you think of greatest interest and emphasize those. And uh, uh, again, try to uh, come up with with a little bit of material from outside the book in that case where where Frederick will already have taught it and taught his version of chapter one uh, a week before you so that gives makes it also a little more challenging by doing it uh, after Frederick whereas if you're doing it the same week as Frederick then you would be presenting first and it'd be his problem to adjust to you <laughs> so okay um, so I'm going to turn off that PowerPoint and uh, oops, again, using the looking at the wrong uh, computer here.
Okay, I'm bringing up a website. Uh, this is keymap.tv, keymap period TV. Uh, you may find this uh, site helpful to you. Uh, we're not getting the full width of it. Let me see if I can. Uh, we're not going to see the whole width, but you can scroll back and forth on it uh, yourselves. Um, I can bring you to the website, but there is a scroll bar at the bottom. You can kind of go left and right on that to see the whole width of it. Um, you see there's a number of links that might be of, of, of interest to you. Uh, mine is, I'm seeing the page kind of lightly. I don't know about the rest of you. Um, On the computer I'm using for web conferencing, it's on a Wi-Fi system, so it's uh, a little bit slow. Anyway, there are uh, links here to over a million blogs. There's uh, links to audio ebooks, the links that I already showed you to uh, news and analysis. Uh, there's research libraries, links to research libraries, uh, some instructions on how to create your own online video. And as I mentioned later in the semester, I might have you as teams uh, create your own videos. And uh, to learn how to do that, there's some videos um, on, if you follow this link, that will teach you how to do that. I mean, I'll go there for in a second. Over on the other side of the page, uh, links to uh, free online courses, links to other free eBooks and textbooks. Uh, multimedia links to multimedia versions of uh, the greatest speeches uh, in American history might be of interest to you, as well as some um, some video-based instruction on on English as a foreign language. So all these links might be helpful to you. Uh, you see some uh, some links here uh, that to videos that I've created uh, right towards the top. Uh, Actually, at this time, all of these videos are mine. They will eventually be replaced by other KeyMet professors. But the, this top tier or top uh, set of uh, videos are mine. You see as you scroll down, if you use the right scroll bar, that there are uh, hundreds of links uh, to educational videos. These ones are all in English, I think. Uh, but these, this may be a website that would be of value to you. As I mentioned, if by some chance we uh, cannot connect and you can get to this website, instead you can go to today's news and analysis and watch three of those videos on the front page. Um, let me go to this uh, create your own online video page within this website. And this is just something to be working on. Uh, it will not be your first creative project for sure but it might be your second one that I might have you work as teams and do and do a video. Um, it's still kind of taking a hard time to come up. But here you, uh, if you use the right scroll bar, you can scroll down and see some videos towards the bottom. Where am I here? Anyway, again, you individually have to scroll down. I, I take you to the web page, but it talks a little bit about in general about creating your own. Actually, it's kind of about creating your own online TV channel. Uh, you see as you scroll down, if you scroll down again using the right scroll, scroll bar, uh, there's a video about uh, a free software called uh, Any Video Converter. Sometimes that's necessary to in order to import a video into Movie Maker or whatever other software you're using to create your video. Um, also, so several videos on Audacity on how to use. Uh, this is also a free software. You can download your home computer, Audacity, and uh, uh, use it to create the audio background to, to a video. So there's uh, three of those. A couple of just how to use PowerPoint uh, to create graphics for a video. And then the rest of these, uh, oh, and then, excuse me, Earth and View. 
Um, mainly related to videos, I use Earth and Video for, for its screen capture capability. Although sometimes in order to improve graphics, of course, I go into Earth and View. Earth and View is also a free software. And uh, Earth and View um, is basically like Photoshop, but it's a free version of Photoshop. Not quite as powerful, but quite, I'd say, remarkably powerful for not, for, you know, for being free. Remarkably powerful. So uh, you can use, uh, uh, there, there are several videos here to teach you how to use Earth and View. But I said one of them, my favorite, is just uh, it allows you to, to screen capture in JPEG or TIFF specifically. So then you can bring it up in Earth and View and, and do your touch up, or crop it, whatever you want to do. Um, unlike uh, your print screen, I'm not even sure where that saves it. But this allows you to tell it where you want it saved. And it, it allows you to say uh, name it the way you want to name it and allows you to um, save it in the format you want to save it, JPEG, TIFF, or something else. And so if you're going to do some screen captures, uh, that's the best way to do it is with uh, Earth and View. And then after that, there's several videos on Windows Movie Maker. And uh, there's, looks like, five of those. If you were to watch all of these videos, uh, if you don't know this stuff already, uh, then you'd be prepared to uh, create a video and I'll talk about that more uh, during my segments uh, in the weeks to come but uh, um, that will be I will expect you to watch these vid instructional videos they're all, all quite short you know maybe four minutes long or something on average and and then as a team one of your creative assignments would be to do a, a an educational video and I'll, I'll show you how to do that so okay so I will go back to the chat and uh, let me bring, uh, in fact, let me go back to the 4 by instead and uh, bring Frederick back on if I Oh, let me see here. Okay, Kim, I, I see you're asking for a break time. I think today we might actually be done. Um, or almost done. Uh, Frederick has a, will make a few comments, and uh, where we're not uh, we're not going to be doing chapter one this week. I think uh, this may be close to the end of the class. So unless a break is urgent, uh, I think we're we're about to wrap this up. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Um, I just, I just want to, uh, you know, reiterate. Um, I, I think Ken's covered very well. Any time to complete the. Um, Expect uh, expect my presentations to be um, the chapter presentations to be um, covering the core material from the chapter and also uh, expanding out a, um, into other areas. So uh, I won't just cover the chapter itself, but I'll also uh, stretch the ideas from the chapter and that um, that help us understand those ideas a little bit better. So um, I do hope um, when, uh, when I'm doing chapter presentations, I hope that people will feel free to use the chat function and uh, ask questions, make comments, um, ask questions and make comments that uh, hopefully will help everybody understand the material better. I do really like students to uh, interactive, to uh, to engage with what's going on, 
um, because I think that's the best way for for individual students and for and for others to understand the material better. So, thank you. Okay, um, I don't have anything else for today. I think I've uh, covered what I wanted to cover today. And if Frederick, Frederick doesn't have anything else, then I think we will uh, go ahead and cut class short today. But we will uh, fill mm -hmm. up all the classes in the future. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, everybody. Um, Hope you don't mind getting out of class a little bit early, but we will uh, be here next week. And uh, you can expect us to, like I said, to fill the all three hours. Hopefully the rest of the students will be here and uh, they will have caught up on, on what's in the syllabus and hopefully not be too far behind by the time uh, uh, we get together again. Okay, thank you everybody. Have a good day. Uh, one last comment. Uh, Please, students, uh, please, everybody, be sure to read the material before we do the lecture. OK, so that means read chapter one. OK. Okay, I think that's it then. If Frederick, Frederick doesn't have anything else, we'll call it a day. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody.